you don't know what it's like for you to see somebody defecate in a hand and eat it. And then with that funk, like you don't like you don't know what it smells like. So I'm sitting right behind this man, man. I hear the dude grunting. The smell, that funk, that funk. <laughs> when you think of mistrials, all the different mistrials that I've I've seen defiled. I remember having a client, right? He was arrested and being tried for three homicides. Now, when I when I got to this particular firm, I wasn't really, I didn't really know the lawyer that was trying a case like that. My small significant role was, or it's very really nice, like small role in the case was to write a motion to limit because I actually did the research. I, I spoke to all of his family members. I looked up his background. I looked up all of his, his rap sheets. I looked at all this, all these uncharged crimes and all these other stuff that will otherwise be prejudicial. So I wrote this big motion to Lemony and I filed it and then they go on the trial. So, you know, again, that's that's my limited scope of my my part in that particular case. So I'm in a stance. Like I'm not next sitting next to the defendant. I'm in a stance. Well, I'm not a lawyer. I'm a law student. Particularly. Now we're talking about a trial, but if this defendant is being accused of three homicides, three bodies. What happened in, in his situation was this: him and his brother was beefing with some guys. It was a drug beef. They go over with to where the guys were at, telling them they can't come out there. They can't come wherever they, they territory was. An argument ensued. The, the brothers, my client and his brother, pulled out their guns. They started hitting. They started shooting. The people that they started shooting at, they pulled out the guns and started shooting. My client wound up shooting and killing somebody. The brother wound up shooting and killing somebody. However, in the midst of that back and forth gunfire, the opposing party shot the brother and wound up killing him. Now, the reason now, my client was charged with his brother's death together with the two deaths that just happened, even though he only killed one. The reason why is because the law, at least in New York, is felony murder. Now, what happens is when felony murder, what they're saying is, if you partake in a, in a crime and somebody dies, in pursuing to that crime, whether it's burglary, bank robbery, shoplifting, whatever, and a person died pursuant to your escape or during that crime, even if you didn't actually kill him, you could be charged with felony murder in second degree. So my client was charged with two counts of first degree murder because this was planned, like it was orchestrated, as well as a second degree felony murder for his for his brother. So that's what his charges was. So we sit in there. Now I've had very brief conversations with the client. Like I might, I may have seen him one time. I, mean, I may have went to the prison, or the jail, which was on Rikers Island, and visit him one time. And it was probably brief, like in a bullpen. So he seemed it's a little off, but he, you know, listen, you you facing three bodies that like you facing them for the rest of your life. Remember, we don't got the death penalty in New York, but you going to for the rest of your life. So we're in a courtroom, and I'm sitting in the back. It, it, like, like I told you to lay, I'm sitting in the audience, right? It's the attorney is there, the defendant is there, the judge is ahead of them. Um, you know, regular courtroom layout. So I'm, I'm you know, like like most trials, like like this Y Y N W Melly trial is lackluster. It's, it's not it's uneventful, nothing is really happening, it's going over the process. Now, this is a listen, man. When I say they got everything, all of the evidence you could think of, like they had witnesses testifying, he had his own statement because remember, his brother died. So his brother died. He's like, he's he's in grief. He's like, yo, I didn't mean that to happen. So he gave his own statement as to what happened. He tried to say, oh, they pulled out their guns first, but either way, he gave a statement. You had, you had some of it was recorded on camera, not the whole thing. You had you had you had everything, right? The only reason why he he, he would have copped out if they would have offered him uh, offered him something, but they wasn't offering him anything. So they was taking him to trial. So you know, they're going through the trial, like not, nothing is happening. So then, so then. As the trial going on, I hear like a grunt, like a like a grunt, right? Now, one thing about me, I got bad eyesight. Listen, as you can see, I got the spitted X on, right? But I can hear very well. Like I can hear very well. It's scary how well, well I can hear. So I hear this grunting sound. Now we in trial, right? Testimonies going on, the prosecutor doing anything. So I don't say nothing because it's coming from the desk. Because I'm telling you, I'm right behind this, this damn witness. I mean, the, the defendant. So I hear that, but I'm like, Nah, I ain't thinking nothing of it. And then I hear it again, right? And I'm like, hmm, what about this? what's going on here? I'm not saying anything, right? Because it's getting a track. The jury's there, the judge, everybody's around. Then all of a sudden, the attorney, who was a woman, gets up. You hear a loud screeching sound, and she takes off. Boom, she runs off, right? Now, when she run off, it's like immediate pandemonium. It's almost like, like you know, you'll, you'll see these tropes about, you'll see a black person running 
and whoever they run by, if it's another black person, they just taking off. They're not asking no questions or nothing. They just taking off. Well, that's kind of what was happening. Cause now remember that you got this dangerous girl, this dude that's locked up. He's being tried for three homicides. You see this white, I mean, you know, she's, she was a black, no, she was a white woman, white woman. White woman gets up and take off screaming. People started running. Now, remind you, I'm behind them. So I don't know what's, what they're looking at. I don't know what's happening in front of them. I'm behind them. Now, I see, I like, I look to my side and I look at the jury and the jury is like, oh my God. And, and I look at the judge and the judge is like, like his eyes is lighting up. And then all of a sudden the, the, the court officers are starting to like converge on the defendant. Meanwhile, the, the, the lawyer, I think she's already out the courtroom. Like she started hurling, like it was crazy. So they tackle the defendant down. Now I like, I'm just in shock, like looking at everything unfold. So they tackle the defendant down and then something told me, hey, look at the desk, look at the actual desk. So when I looked at the desk where the defendant was sitting, where the attorney was sitting, it was a turd on the desk. A turd. Yes, you heard me. A doo-doo, dookie, a piece of it on the desk. He, don't you know this lane? You know, he defecated in his hands and started to eat it. Started to eat it. Right. So after all, while all this is happening, the judge, you know, cleared the courtroom, took all of the juries out the courtroom and banging the gavel all of the court, you know, they pick them up, take them out or whatever, whatever. Fast forward about like 45 minutes later, the, the distraught white attorney comes back. She's shaking. She's looking back at me. I'm like, what you want me to do? I'm, I'm not a lawyer. What you want me to do? So, so she looked back at me. Um, I'm looking at her like, <laughs> like what you, like what you want me to do? Like, I, I'm just black. I'm not I me. Mean, I'm a fight. What, what you want me to do? Like, know what I'm saying? So, so she looking. We we looking at each other, and she's like, yo, like pale slash pink slash red slash purple face. Now the prosecutor is unmoved. The prosecutor is like, well, well, you know, uh, when we gonna start your honor, right? So now the, the court, the judge bring the jury back in, right? First off, they bring the, the dude back in. They, they compose him, they get him, they put a, a mask over his face and he comes back in. So now of course the, the attorney asked for a mistrial. Your honor, nobody is gonna look at him and believe he's innocent or look at him impartially record while knowing this man just sat here and ate a piece of mm. I told you that my client ate a piece of turd and no mistrial was granted right no mistrial was granted they moved on they, they convicted the shit out of him by the way he, he got life 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 